Listen, you're not much different than every other volleyball player. You want to increase your spike touch and also reduce your injuries. But what if I told you, you could be doing the best workout program in the world and receive very little results. And that is because you're missing the most critical factor. And that's how to balance your training to increase your spike touch and decrease injuries. So often an athlete gets really disappointed because they find this fantastic program, but doesn't fit properly within their week. This is why with our volleyball vert and strength optimization program, we assess all our athletes training weeks and set things up so they have balance. In this video, I'm gonna be teaching kind of how we can design some example workouts and how to slot it in your week. So you have the proper balance between workouts, practice, recovery, injury prevention, and whatever else you have on your plate. And guys, if you haven't met me before, I'm Coach Reed Hall. I'm a high-performance volleyball strength conditioning coach and the creator of the Volleyball Vert and Strength Optimization Program, which has been having athletes gain three plus inches on their spike touch, and even better, within 60 days. Anyways, guys, this is a video you're not gonna wanna miss. We're gonna teach you how to balance out your week to increase your spike touch and decrease your injuries. All right, so let's break down a week. This is actually an example week for one of my clients that's practicing three days a week, working out three days a week, and taking one full day off. So with that, whatever your training schedule is and your workout schedule, you gotta try to find a way of having at least one day you take fully off where you're not working out or playing volleyball. Okay, so I've circled the days in red where the athlete is practicing. So they're practicing on Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday. And now throughout this week, we're gonna work out three times, okay? So on Monday, not a practice day, we're gonna do a full body workout. And I'm gonna show you in a second or a little bit later on how I break down actually a full body workout. On Tuesday, you have practice, okay? So you're gonna practice and you're gonna also do what we call body care exercise. So I'd actually do that sometime earlier in the day. But your body care exercise will only take you about 10 to 15 minutes of work. We call it daily body care exercise. It's the stuff that keeps your joints and your musculature functioning really well to keep our joints strong, stable, and mobile. And then Wednesday, no practice. We're gonna do an upper body strength focused workout, but while we're resting from our upper body strength exercise, we're gonna be doing lower body injury prevention exercise. Because we know when we do strength work, we gotta rest for a longer period of time. So instead of sitting there doing nothing, we're gonna focus on our lower body injury prevention. And then Thursday would be different. We would go, basically switch that, right? We go lower body strength work, and then we're resting from our lower body exercise, we do some upper body injury preventative type of exercise. So you can really see on those days how we're hitting two birds with one stone, right? Friday, you have practice, and once again, you'll do your body care routine. And Saturday, the same thing, practice, body care routine. And then Sunday, you rest and do absolutely nothing. You chill out, do your schoolwork or whatever else on your plate, but try not to exert physical activity. So now I'm gonna break down some of these days a little bit further so you can paint an even better picture. Now, I know this might not be your exact schedule, but I want you to start to understand some principles that we're gonna do. Another thing you might ask is, what if this person worked out four days a week? Now they have four workouts and three practices. How do you take a day off? Well, you know what's most important is still taking a full day off, but one day you'll have to find kind of your practice where you do a practice and a workout on the same day. Anyways, guys, come check out how I break down these days. All right, so I wanna kind of break down how to create a full body type of workout. So Monday's full body workout, right? So normally I'd warm up first for about eight minutes. And then sometimes after warm up, we'll do some like speed, agility, jump technique. That stuff not normally too long. Normally you complete that within like six or seven minutes. When we move into the strength work, here's kind of how we balance it out. Okay, so once again, this might not be the workout for you, but watch, we're just trying to learn the principles here. So our first exercise is trap bar deadlifts. And that would be paired with more of an upper body preparation exercise, which is your cable external rotations. So maybe I perform like four rounds of those two exercises. Since trap bar deadlifts is a strength exercise, which means you're lifting heavier weight for less reps, but longer rest times, you have plenty of time to kind of do your shoulder preparation work. Okay, so now after we have A1 and A2, we move more into the meat and potatoes of the workout. So there might be more to the workout moving down, but now I would connect three exercises together. And often when I connect three exercises together, I'll have like an upper, ex upper body exercise, a lower body exercise, and a core exercise, right? So I might do one more block below that with the same thing, where it's a, a lower body, an upper body, or a core exercise, right? So we do half kneeling landmine press, 
okay? And then we would do skater squats, and then we do arms and legs lowering. Since in this block, we're not lifting as heavy as trap bar deadlifts, so it's not as taxing, we don't need as much rest between these exercises, right? So you can see how we kind of balance this full body workout in the first block, lower body exercise, shoulder preparation. And then you do another block where it's an upper, lower, and core. And then maybe you do one additional block below where it's an upper, lower, and core. Another important thing to understand is often if I give an athlete a bilateral exercise, so say that's like trap bar, deadlifts, front squats, back squats, that type of things, I always try to make sure in the next block, you want to include a lower body exercise where it's a unilateral exercise. We're using one leg at a time. Okay, next, I'm just going to kind of go over how I could balance out one of the other workout days. So how about, how do I balance out a day when I have an upper body workout and you know, my legs are absolutely taxed. That's what we'll dig into next. Okay, cool. So on Monday we did our full body workout, right? On Tuesday, we have our body care routine and our practice. And basically your body care routine, you want 10 to 15 minutes work where you're working on maybe some soft tissue work, whether that's like with a foam roller, lacrosse ball, working on some mobility exercise, and then simple low intensity strength exercise, just working on strengthening your different range of motion. But then on Wednesday, we get back into our routines and we have an upper body workout with lower body injury prevention. So I've given an example block here, okay? So A1, I have like an inclined dumbbell bench bench press, okay? And then A2, when I'm resting from this, because this is a strength exercise, I have to rest longer, I would do a 90-90 hip stretch or something else to kind of take care of my lower body. Because my lower body will be pretty fatigued at this point, right? Because on two, Monday, we did a full body workout. Tuesday, we practice. Our coach is a jerk and makes us jump way too much. And so on Wednesday, it allows me to do my upper body strength work, but also allows me to recover my lower body. Obviously, I'd have more blocks moving down, but this is how I'd formulate it right? And then if you go to Thursday, right, you have your lower body workout with in upper body injury prevention slash recovery. It's the same format. You would have a lower body exercise and then a, like a, an upper body injury prevention recovery exercise because you're going to be fatigued from the day before. And then when you move into Friday, Saturday, you know, you're going to be feeling pretty good for your two practices and that's going to be a good tough week. And then on Sunday, you're going to deserve that rest day where you're completely off. Anyways, guys, I think you're starting to understand how balance is absolutely critical for you to increase your spike touch and decrease your injuries. Now, all our athletes that do our remote training, they're given workouts through our app. It's called our Volleyball Vert and Strength Optimization Program. The first step is we do a Zoom strategy session where we dissect your volleyball schedule, your training history, your goals, your injury history. We actually create kind of the blueprint and the structure so we can maximize your results, right? No PDF program will ever do that. We need Need to understand how to structure the best for you. Now, if you're watching this on Instagram and you want to learn more about the program, just send me a DM with the word spike touch. Once again, DM me the word spike touch. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, hop in the description. There should be some more information there. And if you're on Facebook, just send me a direct message. Anyways, guys, once again, I'm going to be coming out with a ton more educational material because my goal is to help educate as many volleyball players on how to train to be a high performance volleyball athlete. You guys enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you.